Hello, Lori Michelle Mashiach with today's message. The value of a global crisis, learning the true meaning. There's a lot of people online now saying that this is a wake up call. If you're a religious person who believes in God, a lot of rabbis are online saying that we need to turn it up now with our teshuva, repentance, and they know this is a very serious wake up call, coronavirus, financial markets crashing. It's a very serious time. And religious people know that when we are suffering, in our suffering, it is a call from Hashem, God, to step it up. He's sending us a message that we're not getting things right, that we could do better, he wants more from us. He wants us to reach for him. But it's deeper than that. And I've been saying that to you for years now. And not a lot of you are listening still. But he said, these wake-up calls, they're going to come more and more and bigger and louder. And it's interesting that we're on the eve of Pesach. Pesach is just a few weeks away, the story of the Exodus. God sent 10 plagues. And he said it took over a, about a year, approximately a year, of plague after plague after plague before the Pharaoh would heed the call and finally let the Jewish people go. But even after he let the Jewish people go, he sent his army after them. It didn't last very long. And so what is the real deep meaning behind what's going on around the world? It's very much like what happened in the story of the Exodus. And if you know the story or you don't know the story, let me explain. These wake up calls have been happening for centuries, for millennia and no one seems to learn. You have expressions like history repeats itself. Oh, it's the same way it's always been. It's no worse, it's no better. This is just the way it is. This is mankind, we are, we're sinners and that's what we, I had a rabbi recently say, that's what Yom Kippur is for. We know that we're gonna sin and we have Yom Kippur to cleanse and it's just the way it is. Oh, he just said, oh, no, it's not. These really are the end of days. And you don't have to listen to me. And you're not. Some of you are. And if you are, mazel tov, God bless you, because you're ahead of the curve. But these crises are going to get bigger and more intense. And people are freaking out all over the world. And this is just the beginning. He showed me missiles last night huge missiles. We're heading to war and you're not listening. I've warned you that there's going to be a redistribution of wealth very soon. It's either going to be voluntary or he's going to do it for you. And you're seeing some of that right now. You don't have to listen to me. You know what? Just call me Lori Michelle because I really am speaking to him. And I'll tell you a little story just to let you know that I'm a lot like you. <laughs> he just said no. I'm very strange, I know. But yesterday, we were experienced the first day of partial shutdown in Israel. It was a little freaky for me. And I went on my seven mile run. And at the end of my seven mile, I should call it a schlep. I'm not really running very well lately. I'm very lazy. But I decided to take the bus back home. And as I got on the bus, the bus driver had rubber gloves on. There was police tape behind him. You're not allowed to sit near the bus driver. And everybody's sitting separately from each other and everybody looks scared. So I got on the bus and as I'm walking to the back of the bus, a heavy set old woman started handing me money in her bare hands. Oh, and in Hebrew, asking me to go pay for her at the front of the bus. 
And in that moment, I said, well, I'm not touching your hands. I don't know if you have this coronavirus. And I looked at her and said, Slicha, lol, I'm not doing it. And I went past her. And then I did what we're all supposed to do right now, teshuva. I turned around, I watched her as she sauntered to the front of the bus and paid for her bus fare. She wasn't an invalid. And I put my hands in my face and I said, oh, Hashem, how rude I am. Oh, 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 I'm so sorry. And he said, Lord, you did the right thing. I said, no, she's an old woman. Two weeks ago, I would have done it. A week ago. But something got into me and I saw her bare hands and I don't know. I don't know where her hands have been. And I said, oh, but Hashem, if I went to the grocery store, it's the same thing. They would hand me money. He said, no, it's not, Lori. And sure enough, I went to the grocery store yesterday and the cashiers have rubber gloves. Some of them have masks on. It was freaky. It's nerve wracking. People are raiding the supermarkets, even though they're saying that there's no food shortage, that we shouldn't do that. So it's a scary time. And what did I do? I repented. And guess what? Hashem said, no, you didn't do anything wrong. And I spoke to two other people. I don't talk to that many people. One of them laughed at me. And the other one said, no, you did the right thing. You, you didn't do anything wrong. And guess what? A day later, I still feel guilt and remorse that I didn't just take her money, pay for the bus fare, and go home and wash my hands. He's saying, no, I didn't do anything wrong, but do you see how I am? He says, Lori, you didn't sin. And I say, no, I could do better. I should have done better. And maybe you're someone sitting there saying, yeah, you should have helped the old lady. And Hashem says, no, she was able-bodied. She should have paid her own bus fare. It was a very scary moment. I was looking around, seeing police tape, and it was frightening. And this is frightening, by the way. This global pandemic is frightening, but we're overreacting. And I'll share one more story, and then I'll finish. Hashem gave me a very prophetic dream that he says was about coronavirus. In the dream, I was walking down the street and this gigantic two-ton bear was right across the street from me. And there was no way I could outrun this bear. It was a scary looking huge bear. So I decided to walk slowly and walk around the corner and the bear came right up next to me. And I'm scared and I'm shaking. And in the dream, the bear spoke to me and said, hi, Lori, how are you? <laughs> and I thought, well, you're not going to kill me. So later that day, I spoke to people and I said, I saw this big, scary bear it was two tons. And at that moment, there were lots of little bears, baby bears all over the street. And they said, no, it wasn't. It was one of these baby bears. They don't hurt anybody. If you don't hurt them, just stay away from the baby bear. So the long and short of that dream was the coronavirus was this big two-ton bear that everybody's petrified of. But that big bear isn't going to kill most people. It's going to come up next to us. We're not even going to catch it. And it's going to say, hello, how are you? And walk away. But eventually, the coronavirus will be a little baby bear. It'll be dangerous. You don't want to provoke a baby bear. You don't want to get the baby bear. There'll probably be a vaccine for this coronavirus very soon. So now we're all whooped up and nervous, and, and I'm being disrespectful to heavy set old women on the bus. <laughs> and he said, no, I'm not, but I'm nervous. I get it, we're nervous, but this will pass. And he just said the next one will come. So wake up and understand that this is a time period where we're being squeezed like an orange. There's a metaphor that I learned from Dr. Wayne Dyer that I love. 
he passed away. I love Wayne Dyer. And he said, what do you get when you squeeze an orange? And the answer is orange juice because that's what's inside. So right now we're all being squeezed. What are we gonna get? When God squeezes you really, really hard, are you gonna be angry? Are you gonna blame Donald Trump and tell the world he's not doing a good enough job and say things like Bibi Netanyahu's just using this occasion for his own political advance? Stupid things like that. Lashon Hara. Or are you gonna work together and come together Maybe the squeezing will be more like 9-11. Remember 9-11, America? Republicans and Democrats finally were together for a very short period of time. There were flags all over America, God bless America. No one was even afraid to say the words, God bless America. Even Democrats who don't like to use that terminology because they think it's alienating to their atheist constituency. They don't want to be politically incorrect. But nobody, but nobody was offended by God bless America during those days, the two weeks, four weeks after 9-11. We were squeezed and we came together. So what's it going to take this time? Coronavirus? isn't doing it, look online, the hatred, the accusations, it's everywhere. The financial markets are crashing, more hatred, foul speech. What's gonna come out of you? Are you gonna step it up, reach for God, and do teshuva, repentance? Are you gonna go online and learn what I've been trying to share with you? I have answers here. I know where coronavirus came from. It's not in this book, but he just said, oh yes it is, the source of evil. I spell it out for you. It's time people to come together and learn what's wrong and teach each other how to get it right all over the world. We have to come together in love, education, and charity and heal the world one person at a time. Are you one? I hope so. I'm praying for you. God bless you.